Hi, HIM family. I am uh, sharing this message and indeed, it's such a privilege for me to communicate it to our HIM family all over the world. It's, a, it's an amazing, amazing opportunity. I want to share with you the message today called to reach the impossible goal. To reach the impossible goal. You know, in our HIM family, we have set out a goal. Pastor Wilson has set out a goal which all of our leaders around the world have said, yes, we want to get to that goal. And that goal is by 20, year 2030, we want to see 3,000 churches and 100,000 disciples in our family of churches. It's a huge goal. And in some ways, I know it's an impossible goal, right? Because we, we, because we, we are faith-filled people and together collectively as HIM family, I believe we want to take on this goal seriously. I'm going to take you uh, through the Bible and I want to share from three great leaders in the Bible with three great principles in their lives to lead us through, to walk us through that I believe if we, if we learn these principles, practice these principles, be inspired by these three great leaders at least, we will be able, we can get to this impossible goal. Amen? So, amen. Let's make, take you two through first passage of the Bible, and that's Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, let me read verses 12 to 16. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spend the night, the whole night, praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, whom he also designated apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and then Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Let's pray together. Our Father, we want to look to you to learn how your great leaders in the Bible accomplish the impossible goal. God, we want to pray that you will enable us too to be people who will be able to accomplish the goals that you have even set for us, O oh God. Father, we pray that you will inspire us, you will teach us, you will motivate us into action. We pray all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. The first area I want to lead us to to learn from is from Jesus. And the first point is prayerfulness with fresh encounters. Prayerfulness with fresh encounters. And that first leader is Jesus, of course. Jesus was a prayerful man. Prayerfulness was always with him. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, for example, we see Jesus would get up very early in the morning. And I believe that's not just a one-off, it was consistently in his life. He prayed, he spoke to God, had that fresh encounter with God. Jesus prayed all night, as we saw in Luke chapter 6. He prayed all night, and the fresh encounter was God gave him the names of the 12 definite disciples. These 12 would accomplish the divine purpose of global salvation, global evangelism. Down the years, down to the ages, these were the people that he chose. Brothers and sisters, uh, a prayerfulness and fresh encounters are so important for every one of us. I believe many of us pray, many of us faithfully pray, but I want to add on this new dimension. Ask God to give us fresh encounters as well. Ask God to help us that we will not just be praying, but we will definitely sense God working together with us. Let me take you to the Bible. In Luke chapter 9, verse 29, G Peter, James, and John, Jesus brought them, brought them to the mountain, and as they were praying, the transfiguration happened. I call this the divine transformation happened. They saw Moses, they saw Elijah. And, you know, there was such a glow 
there was such an encounter. Peter was so amazed. There was a fresh encounter with God. Can I let you, let, lead you through other passages in the Bible, for example? Prayer and fresh encounters. In, Luke, in, in Acts chapter 9, Paul, who had encountered Jesus, was blinded. And God moved Ananias while, you know, Paul was praying. God, God moved Ananias and he went, laid hands, Paul, uh, laid hands and prayed for Paul. And guess what? An apostle was released to God's ministry. So we see, therefore, brothers, it's amazing, right? Right, sisters? You know, maybe we have struggled. Maybe we have been in, in uh, you know, we have unable to see certain revelations. Why don't we pray and ask God to open our eyes so that we are able to see what we have not been able to see? In Acts chapter 12, going on from there, prayerfulness and uh, fresh encounters enable the church to see Peter being released from prison. Peter was locked up. It could have stopped Peter from ministering further. It could have prevented Peter from being able to do anything more. But as the church was praying, as the church was looking to God, God sent an angel, fresh encounter. The angel went to the prison, opened the prison doors, woke Peter up, fresh encounters. God, Peter, uh, Peter walked out of prison as a free man. Fresh, fresh encounters as the church prayed. As a result of that, Peter continued his ministry. Brothers and sisters, we need prayerfulness and we need fresh encounters. I'm going to take you to one more and that's relevant for every single one of us. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Isaiah 40 31 tells us that as we wait on the Lord, as we actively engage with the Lord, these supernatural encounters can happen to us. You know, we can renew our strength. We can rise up and soar again with wings like eagles. We can run and never be tired, never be weary. We can walk the distances. We can walk the miles and never feel faint. Wow, I am definitely believing for this. I am definitely asking God for Isaiah 40 verse 31. And I want to believe that every one of us too would be able to experience this in our ministry, in our lives. You know, in many places of the world, I hear Christians, I hear, you know, we are all worn out. We, 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 life's responsibility is just taking so much taxing and toll from us. But I believe that if we look to God with prayerfulness and with fresh encounters, God can energize us. Well, these are the spiritual vitamins. These are the spiritual uh, uh, things that can help us, you know, to run with God endlessly. In uh, our Malaysian Pastors Fellowship, you know, we've been talking about this thing called vitamin D. What you get from the sunshine and uh, what you can take in tablets, vitamin D. And I'm told vitamin D is such an important, vital ingredient that if we lack vitamin D, we lack energy, we lack stamina, and it can be detrimental to our health. And it is so important, you know. And so prayerfulness, prayerfulness helps us to be charged up again. Prayerfulness means that we don't fail to pray. Prayerfulness means we are looking to God for His divine help and guidance. Prayerfulness means that we are linking a finite man, a, free, a, a fragile man to an infinite sovereign God. Sovereign God. Fresh encounters means we are looking for the supernatural intervention of God. That is not just the work of man alone, but it is the work of God working in each one of us. Brothers and sisters, we need both. We need prayerfulness. And I really want to encourage you, we need fresh encounters with God so that it will continue to refresh and recharge us. I hear from our HIM prayers. I want to commend our Filipino brothers and sisters. I hear from Pastor Moses who joined 
that 80% of the attendees are our Filipino brothers and sisters. Congratulations. But dear brothers and sisters throughout the world, let's come to the Lord. Let's seek the Lord in prayerfulness and with fresh encounters from God. I believe if we do that, we will not lack energy and strength. We will not lack God's supernatural intervention in our churches, in our ministries, and even in our personal lives. The second great leader that I'm choosing from the Bible with a equally great principle is the leader Nehemiah. The second point, therefore, I want to encourage and share with us is preparations with definite actions. Preparations with definite actions. From Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1 to 4, we see Nehemiah was also a prayerful man, right? When Nehemiah received the news of his brothers and, 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 and you know, his, uh, his, his, the Israelites in, in uh, captivity, he prayed. He sought the Lord. But more than that, Nehemiah began to make very careful preparations. Careful preparations. And the conclusion in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 15, we, the Bible tells us, Nehemiah successfully completed the wall in a record time of 52 days. This did not just happen because he prayed, but he also prepared for definite actions. Brothers and sisters, you know, when I also look into Jesus, I mentioned about the great leader, the great, great uh, principles that he had. I believe we can see Jesus prayed a lot, definitely. But Jesus also made very careful plans. For example, choosing exactly the 12 people that he wanted, the places where he was going to go. You know, there are multiple places that Jesus could have gone but he chose the specific places he wanted to visit and he also planned to touch the specific people that he wanted to impart the presence of God, the touch of God too. And I believe, you know, uh, Jesus continued planning, planning places, uh, people, and moreover, the kind of lessons that he wants to impart to the disciples said that they will continue what he has done and in their own way. Jesus did not just pray, but he planned for definite actions as well. There are two key things that I like to encourage us in all of our churches and all of our people. Brothers and sisters, prepare your plan of action. Prepare your plan of action. This is the to-do list the to-do list, the execution that you are going to embark on and that you need to do. You know, in the plan of action, I would like to suggest five principal ingredients, five main ingredients that, that must be in our plan of action. Let me give them to you as clearly as I can. Number one, in our plan of action, we must have the what do you plan to do? What? What do you plan to do? We need to list down as many things as possible that we can remember what do we need to do. The second point in the ingredient is how are you going to get it done? It's great to know what we want to do, but how are we going to do it? The third part of the ingredient is what will you need? What will you need? You know, Nehemiah was very clear. He wanted to build the wall. He surveyed the whole area. He made the plans. There was a master plan and he, 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 he knew what he wanted to do. He knew how he was going to get it done. He, the, the third part of the ingredient was, what will you need? And that's where he went to the king. That's where he went to the people, you know, and said, look, this is what we need. And the king gave it to him. Third is, what will you need? Fourth part of the ingredient is, who will help you to do it? A great project, and especially an impossible project, cannot be done by one person alone. You know, fulfilling the Great Commission 
is not done by just one movement, one church, one denomination, etc. It requires the cooperation of every, every church in the world. So who will help you to do? Who will be doing what kind of areas? So the impossible plan requires the plan of action, which I have mentioned again. Number one, what do you plan to do? Number two, how are you going to get it done? Number three, what will you need? Number four, who will do what kind of responsibility? And the fifth part of the ingredient always is, when are we going to start? It's great to have plans. It's great to get the people mobilized. It's great to have the resources. But a question is also strategically, when? When are you going to get it done? Sometimes, you know, plans like uh, a seven-year plan may require a stage one, stage two, stage three. It may require various stages so that we, 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 we build in various stages to get there. We evaluate those situations as well. So prepare your plan of action. Second thing I want to recommend to us is prepare for contingencies. This is the plan B, or sometimes even plan C. You know, uh, plans may be perfectly done, but in reality, when we get to the ground, it is never the same, right? It is never the same. Like in the case of Nehemiah, there is the Sanbalat, and there is the, the Tobias, the people who are definitely biased against you, the people who object, who oppose, you know, the people who always criticize. In a plan of execution, we have to plan for contingencies. We have to plan that people may not be exactly how we see them to be. You know, Jesus encountered huge amount of, of oppositions. The Sadducees, who were always sad, you see, who were uh, the Pharisees, and, and, and the Judas, you know, people will leave you. People may sometimes even betray you, right? But Jesus was prepared for it. Jesus had his contingencies. I have discovered that working with uh, church situations and with people, problems will never disappear. There always will be situations that, uh, that, get, that, that we did not expect. But, brothers and sisters, with God, I want to encourage every one of us, with God, we are called to solve the problems. The more we are able to resolve issues and problems, the more the progress will go smoothly. So we see in the situation, right, when we, when, when we, after we have prayed, we need to make preparations with definite actions. Definite, definite uh, actions require the plan of action, the execution, the list, and how we're going to do it. It requires us to think about possible scenarios of, of hiccups, of situations that do not proceed as well as they would be that we expect it to. I want to share with us an incredible testimony of our Him family in Thailand. You know, I have spoken to the, uh, 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 our key leaders in Thailand and I have received from Pastor Yung Yud together with, uh, you know, the key elders of our Him family in Thailand, the master plan of Him Thailand. They have been praying, they have been preparing, they have been planning since 2017. Since 2017, and they have a master plan to 2030. You know, the number of churches they intend to pioneer, the number of leaders that they, 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 they plan to raise up. There is a, a total and complete comprehensive plan from 2017 all the way to 2030. You know, they have, they have, they have gotten together, they have been praying together, they have been pr uh, uh, planning together, right through. If you like to see that master plan, you know, look for some of our Thai leaders and ask them, hey, can you, can you provide me at least a sample so that I can be inspired, so that I can learn, and so that I can prepare 
this plan of definite actions. Brain sisters, many of us pray a lot. Many of us are committed to seeking God, which is great. I want to commend you. I want to really support you in all of this. But I want to add on some thoughts here. Many of us pray, but we fail to plan. And in some cases, there are weak plans and poor plans. And because of that, we may not be able to get to that goal. Can I make a very, very definite and strong suggestion? Get your team together, pray, and make some plans. I'd like to suggest an annual plan. And I, I, I'd like to suggest you break down into quarterly, quarterly evaluations of those plans. And for some of us who have the manpower and you have the, the resource to be able to plan longer, start right now and make long-term plans. Make those long-term plans. Stage one, stage two, stage three, you know, in, uh, in Malaysia, we have gotten together only so much last year and we are starting, starting to really put together a definite plan of action. How to be able to get to 2030, what are the goals we want to set, what kind of training and equipping we need to get there. I pray that you will take number two in place. Number one is pray with uh, encounters from God, fresh encounters from God. Number two, preparation with definite plans of action. The third great man of the Bible, the third great leader of the Bible that I want to choose with an amazing principle is Moses. And I call this third point, provisions with multiplications. Provisions with multiplications. The third P, by the way. Uh, uh, they've all started with P. And the great leader that I've chosen is Moses. In Exodus chapter 25 to 31 and Exodus chapter 35 to 40, we see Moses successfully completed the tabernacle. Yes, Moses did a, an amazing project by getting the people out of Egypt but I want to choose the building of the tabernacle as the third principle, and that is provisions with multiplications. Moses successfully completed the tabernacle from nothing. They were in the desert, can you imagine? With just the heat, sand all around, he completed this project with, quote unquote, slave labor, with gold, that God supernaturally provided from, I think, the Egyptians with many, many types of materials, fine linen, uh, with acacia wood that they constructed all kinds of small and, and, and big utensils and, and structures. Uh, they, he, he had, he had a, a manpower of great craftsmanship, you know, in, in uh, Bezalel and Aholiab. And he managed... He managed to put them all together in great, great uh, 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 leadership to be able to build this tabernacle of worship in the desert. Moses reached the impossible goal. And my third point is he had provisions supernaturally and also multiplied supernaturally as well. So let me... Let me break it down for us. Let me encourage every one of us. The first area I want to talk about this is pray and ask God for manpower provisions. Pray and ask God for manpower provisions. Let me encourage you with what I see in the book of Exodus and what Moses asked for. Moses asked and received people with specific skills. Bezalel and Oholeb. They were people given by the Lord, given to the community who were able to do all kinds of craftsmanship in all kinds of materials. Amazing, amazing. Brothers and sisters, we need to ask God for people with specific skills. Secondly, we need to ask God for people with different skills for different ministries. How many say amen? 
You know, in our church in Kuala Lumpur, we recognize that we need different skills for different ministries. We, 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 we like to grow, we like to develop, we like to expand, but it can only happen if we are able to mobilize specific skills and different kinds of skills. Thirdly, you know, I, I, I see with Bezalel and Oholiab, for example, they were not only given the skills of craftsmanship to be able to construct and build and, and create incredible, incredible uh, structures, but they were also trainers and equippers. They brought people who were interested, passionate, who had the skill in, uh, in, in their heart and skill in their hands and, and, and in themselves. He, they both trained them and equipped them and enabled them to expand the work that they were doing. So pray that God would give us trainers and equippers so that we can multiply the skill set in our churches. A growing church, a developing church will need people with a variety of giftings, a variety of skills to multiply a variety of ministries. How many say amen on that? Fourthly, we can pray that God will give us people who will become leaders and elders as well. You know, after Moses got a bit too tired and worn out, etc., he asked God for manpower, leaders especially, elders especially, and God gave him good people, you know, the 70 elders that served together with him. So pray and ask God for manpower provisions. Secondly, I want to ask us to pray and believe God for material provisions. Materials, provisions. Moses asked of God and asked of the people for all kinds of materials and surprisingly, guess what? The people gave. The people gave all that was required to build the tabernacle. So much so, the Bible tells us that he had to tell them to stop. Isn't this a wonderful problem for the church? Where you have so much manpower, where you have so much material resources that you have to tell the people, hey, that's enough. That's more than enough. In Exodus chapter 31, verse 7 to 11, in fact, God gave to Moses 10 different types of resources. How many say amen? 10 different types of resources. You know, as I look at even our own church in Kuala Lumpur, if I'm given 10 different kinds of incredible resources, man, I'm going to shout hallelujah, you know. 10 different types of resources for different types of purposes utilized in different aspects of the tabernacle. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I want to uh, add on a third area of provisions, and that is pray and plan to multiply the provisions you already have. Pray and plan to multiply the provisions you already have. It's wonderful for us to be able to know that God has given us manpower, given us material, but I want to add on. The third aspect is multiply. Multiply the manpower resources and provision. Multiply the material resources and provisions. We need to think long-term and we need to think sustainability. Pray and plan that the ministries that we are embarking on now will last beyond us. And that's sustainability. Amen? And we need to think expansion and we need to think multiplication. If God gives me a certain sum, if God gives me a certain number of manpower, I would like to expand and I would like to multiply these resources. I think you can say amen to that. Plan now and plan for the future. Plan now and plan for the future. Some of us are lacking provisions. I know that. And I want to encourage you to ask God Believe God and learn how to receive these provisions from God and from our people. Some of us have more provisions. 
I want to ask you and encourage you, multiply these provisions. Multiply what has God given to you. You know, when God asked Moses, what is in your hand? Moses says, I have a staff. And from that staff, God delivered two million people. When, uh, when Elijah asked that widow, what do you have in a time of famine? She had a little oil and Elijah multiplied that oil and it never, never ceased to go to zero. Uh, 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 Jesus asked the little boy, how many loaves, how many fishes do we have? Five and two, and it fed 5,000 people. Brothers and sisters, provisions with multiplications can be in our churches, can be in every one of us. How many say amen to that? I say amen to that. I am testifying to the fact that over my 50 years as a Christian, 40 over years in serving God, I have seen God provided. God has provided manpower, God has provided materials, and God has multiplied both those manpower and those materials. I believe it definitely can happen to you. I see in the Bible that God wants to do that for every single one of us. Dear brothers and sisters, in conclusion, I really want to encourage you, you know, what I've shared with you from really what I believe in my heart. Prayerfulness with fresh encounters, preparations with definite actions, provisions with multiplications. I believe God wants to do it for us and I believe with all my heart if every one of us continue to take these into our lives, take it into the habits of our walking with God, I believe we can reach that impossible goal. I believe what we set out to do in HIM family now to 2030, it is possible. I want to end with the final fourth P, and that is productivity. And I want to bring you to Acts chapter 2, you know, from 120 frightened, scary disciples, God multiplied them to 3,000 people, 5,000 people, and the multitudes. Brothers and sisters, wouldn't you like to see some of these things happen supernaturally in our HIM family, where we say, God, we want 3,000 churches, 100,000 disciples, it's multiplication of three, multiplication of four. You know, God can do it for us. And so I encourage us, everyone, everybody can be involved, everybody can continue to pray, can continue to prepare, can continue to provide, provide those provisions that we need together, collectively, you know, whether it is in, in the part of the world where you are, collectively, as an entire global family, I believe if we do these three things, God can help us to arrive at that impossible goal. Amen? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Hallelujah. God, we have looked into your Bible. We've seen at least three great leaders of the Bible. They accomplish these impossible goals, impossible projects for you. Father, we want to capture the heart and spirit from these leaders. We want to capture these principles. Principle of prayerfulness. Prayerfulness, Lord. Principle, O oh God, of preparations and believing you for the multiplication of provisions. God, these are all throughout the Bible and you can do it in our days. You can do it in our church. You can do it for every of our members as well. And so we commit, Lord, Father, this impossible project to you. We want to pray. We want to work it out. We want to be able to look to you, Lord, that this is possible. Father, we commit all of this to you, O God, the praying, the preparation, the provisions, and Lord, we want to commit every single person to you, that you will give us, Lord, a spirit of diligence to look to you to see these things happen. We thank you. We praise you, O oh God. We are so 
We are so blessed, O oh Lord, in our hearts that we can work together as a global family to accomplish such an impossible goal. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.